Names are super important to a character, especially when the idea is to convey what the character is through its name. In the case of Pokemon, there are so many little characters to memorize. So many, in fact, that the names are crucial. So to better get the idea across of what they are, they combine words. Bulbasaur is a dinosaur with a bulb. Snorlax is relaxing and snoring all the time. See what I mean? But these are just the English names. Pokemon is a global franchise, so of course it comes in many different languages. So far, we've covered English and Japanese, arguably the two most important languages for Pokemon. But if I had to rank any other language as third, it would have to be the most spoken language in the world. That being... Mandarin Chinese. So today we're going through the first generation of Pokemon, looking at their names in Mandarin and breaking them down to directly translate their meaning. And because I just know I'd butcher this language, I've brought along Josh Lin who is a native Mandarin speaker. He's gonna say these names as clearly as possible for us. Also, one thing of note, some Pokemon names in Mandarin were clarified or changed later on. Video about that here. But just note that we will be using the up-to-date official names. Now then, let's get started. Literally, and note when I say literally, I mean the name is just this sentence, or just is these words put together, as that's just how the language works. It's difficult to make puns in Mandarin, at least in the same way that English speakers think of puns. Anyway, it's literally Wonderful Frog Seed. Literally, Wonderful Frog Grass. Literally, Wonderful Frog Flower. Literally, Little Fiery Dragon, but also the word for lizard with some extra syllables added to it. Literally, fiery dinosaur. Pen long. Literally, fire breathing dragon. Wow. You know what? Just so that I don't have to say literally a million times, from now on, unless otherwise stated, all names are literally just words put next to each other. That's just how this language happens to work. And of course, after I stop saying literally all the time, we get to a Pokemon that is not just literally a thing. This name is a partial transliteration of its Japanese name. A transliteration is when you write out a word from one language using the characters of another. For example, here's a word in Greek. But if you don't know how to read Greek, you have no idea how to pronounce this or even where to start. Here's a word in Hebrew. Unless you know Hebrew, you have no idea what this means. It's just a bunch of scriggity scracks. But we can transliterate these words using the English alphabet so that English readers have a better idea of how it's pronounced. Logos, Hanukkah. There are a good number of Mandarin names that do this, but back to Squirtle, it is a transliteration of its Japanese name plus Mandarin for turtle. So it's Japanese pond turtle, turtle. Kamigwe. Same as before, a partial transliteration of its Japanese name and turtle. Means water rocket turtle. Lü Mao Chong. Green furry worm. Notably, though, furry worm is their term for caterpillars. So, green caterpillar. Tie Jia Yong. Armored chrysalis. Ba Da Die. A partial transliteration of its Japanese name, which pulls from English for butterfly, and with Mandarin for butterfly plopped on at the end. A hodgepodge of languages going on. Single horned bug. And here we are, Pokemon 14, and it's finally what we English speakers see as the classic Pokemon naming scheme, meaning a combination of words that share a syllable, like squirt and turtle, combine them, squirtle. This, by the way, is called a portmanteau. Kakuna's name in Mandarin is a combination of the Mandarin words for iron shell and chrysalis, and it happens to end sounding like the English word cocoon. And another! This name combines large, bee, and stinger. Is just a transliteration of the Japanese name, which is the Japanese onomatopoeia for the sound a pigeon makes. Repeats the first syllable of the Japanese name and adds Mandarin for bird. Transliterates the first syllable of its Japanese name and adds big and bird. 小拉达 
La da. These names work best explained together, as Raticate's name here is just the transliteration of its Japanese name, then Rattata's adds little to translate to little Raticate. Lie chue means fierce sparrow. Da zui chue big mouthed sparrow. A bo she. The full transliteration of its name in Japanese, which in itself is a transliteration of the English word boa, but with the kana reversed. So this name just traveled all over the place. But in Mandarin, it's that, but then you add the Mandarin character for snake at the end. A bo guai is a partial transliteration of its name in Japanese with freak added at the end. Wow, rude! Calling the poor snake a freak? Pikachu. Full transliteration of the Japanese name, which famously comes from the sound of sparkling and the sound of squeaking. Also notably, a pika is a small Canadian rodent. Leichu. Full transliteration of its name in Japanese, but in a pun-like situation also contains thunder. Chuanshanshu. Combines pangolin and mouse, or perhaps could be literally translated as mouse that passes through the mountains. Chuanshan Wang. Combines pangolin and king, literally king of going through mountains. Ni duo lan, ni duo na, ni duo ho, ni duo lang, ni duo li nuo, ni duo wang. These names are all full or partial transliterations of the Japanese names, but then uses masculine or feminine Mandarin characters based on which line you're referring to, the male or the female. Then, of course, the last two contain king and queen. P P transliteration of its name in Japanese, which comes from Pixie. P K C also a transliteration of its name in Japanese, which comes from Pixie. Liu Wei literally six tails. There you go. I wonder what's next. Jiu Wei yeah, nine tails. Pang Ding combines pudding and chubby. Pang Ke Ding. Also combines pudding and chubby, but in a different way. Chao Yin Fu, supersonic bat. Da Zui Fu, big mouthed bat. Zou Lu Cao, traveling grass. Chou Chou Hua, stinky flower. Ba Wang Hua is the Mandarin name for the Rafflesia, which is the flower that it's based on. And funnily enough, breaking down the name for that flower, it literally means tyrant flower. Pai la si. Transliteration is kind of a hard word to keep on saying, so I'm going to stop saying that. So when I say just the Japanese name, know that that means it's just a transliteration of its name from Japanese. After all, that's what Paris is in Japanese even, a transliteration of the English word parasite, but shortened. And in Mandarin, it's the same. Pai la si te. Same as before, from English's parasite. Mao qiu. Fur ball. Mo lu e. Transliteration of the first two syllables of this Japanese name, and moth. Di shu. Mole. Yeah, mole. Notably, the Mandarin word for mole literally means ground rodent, so there's that. Also, it could be a reference to the last part of whack a mole in Mandarin. San di shu. Three moles. Great. Meow meow. Literally, meow meow. Meow meow. Mao Lao Da Elder or Boss Cat Ke Da Ya Comes from the Japanese name, which means child duck, but with Mandarin for duck added in. Ke Da Ya Is also from the Japanese name with duck added in, but also note the first character in this name is made up of two of this character, which is the first character in the name of the previous evolution, which is to imply a connection or reference. Ho Guai Monkey monster. Huo bao ho. Fire bursting monkey, which is odd because it's not fire type, nor does it naturally learn any fire moves. It must be a reference to how it gets red hot with anger. Ka di go. The Japanese name, which is a cute way of saying guard, plus dog. Feng su go. Wind speed dog. Wen xiang ke do. Combines mosquito coil and tadpole. Huh, that's actually a really interesting way of putting it. Its swirl is like a mosquito coil. Wen Xiang Jun. Mosquito coil and prince. And may also refer to the Japanese suffix kun. 
and this name may refer to the Frog Prince story, as Polly Whirl, when given the King's Rock item, will evolve into Polly Toad, which in Mandarin is named Mosquito Coil Frog King. But in Gen 1, it only evolved into Polly Wrath, which in Mandarin is named Wen Xiang Yong Shi, meaning Mosquito Coil Swim Warrior which happens to be a play on words, classical Pokemon naming style, as the second syllable in swim is the same as the first character in warrior, as both are pronounced Yong, Kai Si, refers to Edgar Casey, a famous psychic, Yong Chi La, refers to Yuri Geller, a famous psychic magician, Hu Di, refers to Harry Houdini or Jean-Robert Houdin, both famous magicians. Wan Li. Wrist strength. Oh yeah, can't wait to go out and catch me a wrist strength. Hao Li. Heroic strength. Guai Li. Monster strength. You know, don't heroes take down monsters all the time? Doesn't that imply that heroes are stronger than monsters? So shouldn't these be reversed? Hmm. La Ba Ya. Trumpet sprout. Ko Dai Hua. Vacant looking mouth flower. It does look pretty dead inside. Da Shi Hua. Flower with a big appetite. Ma Nao Shui Mu. Is a transliteration of its Japanese name. Du Zi Shui Mu. Venomous sting jellyfish. Xiao Quan Shi. Small fist rock. Long Long Shi. Rumbling rock. Long Long Yen Rumbling Boulder Xiao Huo Ma Little Fire Horse Lie Yen Ma Horse of Roaring Flames Dai Dai Shou Slow Witted Creature <laughs> Even the Pokemon officials don't know what this thing is supposed to be. <laughs> Besides stupid, that is. Dai Ke Shou Literally, Slow Witted Shell Creature. Xiao Ci Guai Little Magnetic Monster San He Yi Ci Guai Three in One Magnetic Monster Da Cong Ya Big Scallion Duck Du Du Same in Japanese, from Dodo Du Du Li Same in Japanese, from Dodo and Trio Xiao Hai Shi Young Sea Lion And also just as literal as the English name, Seal what the heck? At least Mandarin has the excuse of portmanteaus not working the same way, and them being really hard. So like, you know, they can be literal all they want, it's how their language works. But English and Japanese, no. Game Freak was just lazy. Seal and Ninetales, terrible. Bai Hai Shi White Sea Lion Chou Ni Foul Sludge Chou Chou Ni Very Foul Sludge Bay. Big tongued shell. Zijia Bay. Spike armored shell. Gui Si. Combines ghost and gas and is a transliteration of the Japanese name at the same time. Gui Si Tong. Roughly from the Japanese name, but also a combination of ghost, gas, and to pass through. Geng Gui. From the Japanese name, which is from German doppelganger, and also Mandarin for ghost. Da Yan Shi. Big Boulder Snake. Cui Mian Mo. Hypnotizing to peer. At least they explain what it is. I had no idea as a kid. Yin Meng Mo Ren. Dream inducing to peer devil person. Da Qian Xie. Means crab with big pincers. Ju Qian Xie. Crab with giant pincers. Pi Li Dan Chiu. Thunderbolt Electric Ball. Wan Pi Lei Dan. Naughty Thunder Bomb. Dan Dan. It's egg! Twice! In Chinese, repeating a character can imply multitudes of a thing, which works well here. That's a lot of egg. But it can also imply that something is cute or endearing. Ye Dan Shu. Combines palm tree, egg, and tree. Kala Kala. Same name in Japanese, from the sound of light clattering. Gala Gala. Same name in Japanese, from the sound of heavy clattering. 
飞腿狼 Flying legs and young male. 快拳狼 Quick fists and young male. 大舌头 Big tongue. 瓦斯弹 Gas bomb. 双弹瓦斯 Double gas bomb. 独角犀牛 Singular horned rhino. 钻角犀兽 Drill horned rhino creature. 吉利蛋 Lucky egg. 蔓藤怪 Vine freak. 袋兽 Combines kangaroo, pouch, and creature. I'm really glad they say creature instead of just kangaroo. It's it's just kangaroo-like because it has a pouch. Because this thing is not just a kangaroo, obviously. 墨海马 Ink seahorse. Actually, now that you mention it, seahorses don't shoot ink, and that's like horsey's whole thing. How did I not realize that this was weird forever ago? 海刺龙 Sea sting dragon, perhaps mixed with the Mandarin word for cynathidae, which is the familial term for these things. 角金鱼 Horned goldfish. 金鱼王 Goldfish king. 海星星 Starfish star. 宝石海星 Jewel starfish. 魔强人偶 Magical wall doll, 飞天螳螂 flying mantis, 迷唇姐 bewildering lip lady. <laughs> That's one way to put it. 电击兽 electric shock beast, 鸭嘴火兽 duck billed fiery creature, 凯罗斯 transliteration of its Japanese name. 肯泰罗 same as the Japanese name, which combines Japanese for centaur and Greek for centaur. 鲤鱼王 carp king. 暴鲤龙 literally violent carp dragon. Though this pulls from carp with dragon head as well, and the phrase carp leaps over the dragon gate, as that's the Chinese legend this Pokemon is based on. 拉普拉斯 transliteration of its Japanese name. 百变怪 hundred transformation creature. 伊布 transliteration of the Japanese name, which spells out the sounds of the first two letters of the English word evolution. 水伊布 water Eevee. Yeah, every evolution follows this pattern, which is just super creative, right? 雷伊布 thunder Eevee. 火伊布 fire Eevee. 多边兽 Polygonal creature. 菊石兽 Ammonite beast. 多刺菊石兽 Spiky ammonite beast. 化石盔 Fossil helmet. 镰刀盔 Sickle helmet. 化石翼龙 Fossil pterodactyl. 卡比兽 Is partially from the Japanese name, along with beast. 急冻鸟 ，quick freezing bird。闪电鸟 ，lightning bird。火焰鸟 ，flaming bird。迷你龙 ，mini dragon。哈克龙。Now here's a circle of translation. The first part is a transliteration of the Japanese name, which is the Japanese name of the dragon companion of Zhu Baji from the originally Chinese legend Journey to the West. And then you add Mandarin for dragon at the end. So this name was originally Chinese, put into Japanese, and then rather than taking the original Chinese bit, they took a transliteration of the Japanese bit for the Chinese name of this Pokemon. Huh. Kuai Long. The first part is from its Japanese name, and then it's Mandarin for dragon. Chao Meng, Meng Huan. Mu's name here means dream or illusion, referring to how mysterious and rare it is. And then its man-made clone Mewtwo can be translated as either ultimate dream or to transcend dreams. This works well as Mewtwo is seen as the superior Mew, so it's an even better dream or illusion. And that's Gen One. Interesting how so many of them just pull from the Japanese names with a Chinese character added onto them.
and most of these names are about as literal as you can get. Notably though, the Gen 1 names in Japanese are similar in their literality. But as the generations progress, the names get more complex and even more creative, so perhaps we'll see the same thing happen in Mandarin. So I hope you'll find out by joining us next time, and until then, please remember to never stop using your noggin, and if you like having super cool merchandise, there's a link in the description to our merchandise store, which has a bunch of super cool merchandise. Check it out. Thanks a bunch!